Okay, just uh, doing a quick uh, pod here, second one. Um, just want to reflect really quickly on the Super Bowl that happened uh, just a couple days ago. Um, if you check out my first podcast, um, what I had to say was fairly accurate. Um, I felt as though if it was a close game, the Chiefs were going to win. But uh, I did acknowledge that the Niners had enough ability to beat them, um, but that they had to take it to them like the Bucks did years ago when they beat them in the Super Bowl. It's the only way to beat the Chiefs. Um, uh, as you'll notice as well, um, where you want to have Mahomes is where he's really trailing, starting to get desperate. There were a couple of plays in the games where Mahomes made some ill-advised um, tosses or throws. Um, but, um, you know, well, there's only maybe two of them in this game, but he, he played amazing. Um, you know, he's worked working with less uh, talent offensively than he has in the past. Um, the defense is, is um, spot on, so you can't say that their defense is weaker than it was in the past. So, But their offense, um, it's a testament to how good he is, really, because... Um, uh, he had much more to, much less to work with. Not that you know, again, not that the players he has suck or or horrible or anything like that. It's just that, um, you know, some of the weapons that he's had in the past weren't quite there. The same, same capacity. Um, Brock Purdy played decently. Um, I think uh, you're asking them to do too much with some injured receivers and whatnot. Uh, the Niners would do well to get a, go out and get some receivers, um, get Debo healthy, um, try to keep um, key pieces on their defense, and uh, they'll be back, I'm sure. But they they got to be a little bit more explosive offensively if they want to win the Super Bowl next year, particularly if they have to go against the Chiefs again. And, um, yeah, I thought it was uh, it was a close game, but once the – once the Niners didn't punch it in, um, punch in the, the touchdown and the overtime there, uh, I think everybody knew it was over, that Mahomes was going to take it in. Um, and a big play by Houston, I believe it was, on this on the um, blitz, because I think Brock Purdy had a free guy coming across uh, during a crossing route in the end zone. Uh, would have been a nice touchdown there, but he couldn't even see them because the blitz was right in his face. So um, kudos to the Chiefs play calling. I think their coaching is phenomenal. Um, I think coaching coaching is obviously much um, much more underrated than it uh, than it should be. And coaching is so important, um, and you can see it with the Chiefs with their their calls on defense, switching up the defense. Um, their offense, um, the calls that they made. Another thing that I called during the game, I was watching with someone and I told them on that key fourth down that Mahomes had, I told them that he was not going to hand the ball off or even pass it to anyone, that he was going to uh, do a quarterback sneak off of a fake handoff, and that's exactly what he did. Mahomes didn't want to give it to anyone else. He was going to make the decision himself. And uh, if they didn't make it, then it would be on him, not on someone else. Um I thought it was a great call, and um, with the rules being what they are these days, I think more teams should do it because no one's going to come rifling in on a quarterback um, like that in a way that they need to to stop them. So, um, yeah, a good game, though, and, um, yeah, Mahomes is definitely uh, getting in that GOAT conversation. I don't think he's the GOAT yet, but he's um, now – or even prior to this game, really, for most people. But for me, he's in that conversation. I'll be doing um, some top 10 videos in the future of who I think the best running backs, receivers, quarterbacks are in the future. So you can listen for those. And I'll also be um, um, putting my order on different NFL lists that are out there from videos that I'll post for you guys as well. All right, take care.